Papa. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. Livestock production is increasing rapidly as a result of the growing demand for animal products. Projections by FAO suggest that global meat production and consumption will rise to around 300 million tons and milk to 700 million tons by 2020. This forecast shows a massive increase in animal protein demand needed to satisfy the growth in the human population. There is therefore an urgent need to meet the food and protein needs of the ever-increasing population. However, the livestock industry, which is supposed to help meet these food and protein needs, is faced with challenges of high cost of feed and issues with transhumans relating to extensive livestock feeding practices. This has led to demand for meat far exceeding supply, especially in the case of the ever-growing population in Ghana. The search for and use of novel protein feed sources is therefore a sure way of improving supplementary protein self-sufficiency in Ghana's livestock agriculture. In relation to this, the Ghana National Learning Alliance NLE, under the DFID funded Sustainable Agricultural Intensification Research and Learning in Africa CELA program is pursuing social learning and stakeholder engagement activities around the subject of alternative protein feed sources for livestock agriculture in Ghana. The initiative involves engaging key actors in the livestock sector in dialogue, knowledge sharing, and learning situations to influence appropriate policy and investment decisions and stimulate requisite actions in that regard. In pursuit of this, the Ghana NLA organized a field visit to research and production sites at the CSIR Animal Research Institute, where insect larvae are being produced as source of protein for feeding livestock. The visit was aimed at giving the participants, that is, the NLA members, district directors of agriculture, researchers, livestock farmers and feed millers, an opportunity of seeing at first hand the reality of this novel idea of raising and using insect larvae as sustainable and affordable source of protein for livestock feed formulation. It is an expected outcome that the visit will help to increase understanding and stimulate the needed debate for appropriate actions and possible uptake of this important concept as a cost-effective way of boosting productivity in Ghana's livestock sector. We recognize the fact that modern animal husbandry faces a lot of problems including getting adequate sources of protein components for livestock feed and uh, the cost of securing that in terms of other sources such as soybean as well as fish meal has become very high. So the Animal Research Institute together with other researchers are trying to find novel means of substituting that kind of protein with other sustainable and less costly means. And that is how come we are partnering with a project called IFWA, that is Insect for Feed in West Africa, to understand how insect larvae can be a source of protein for feeding livestock. We have already had interactions and discussions with scientists of this institute who are researching into the possibilities and the viability of that source of um, protein. So we needed to bring the members here 
to see for themselves how this activity is done, how an insect tree is raised or established, and how the larvae is produced to be able to harvest them and then use them as part of the meal that we prepare for our animals in our sector or in the work that we are doing. This concept of insects for feed is finding an alternative source of protein either in animal feed or even for human food. Why so? We've noticed that poultry production, fish production is quite expensive and a very large percentage, over 70 percent of the cost is linked to the cost of the protein sources, be it soybean meal or fish meal. Insects, larvae, that is the hatched eggs, what come out of them, are very rich in protein. And there are some insects that are quite easy to raise to get their larvae. This is why there is this concept of finding insects that are easy to raise, both for industry and for at farmer level, and learn about it, see how safe they are to be used in feed and as food, and develop that technology which will transfer to industry. Looking forward that this would drastically reduce the cost of the protein component in feed composition. Here in Ghana, there are two projects that are running. We have a project on insects for feed in West Africa. So Ghana is part of three countries who are participating in it. We have colleagues in Burkina Faso and Benin also doing that. Under the Ghana National Learning Alliance, which is looking at sustainable agricultural intensification, through a learning alliance or a social learning issue to influence policy, we're looking at alternative sources of protein. And this is where there is the link between the NLA and the IFWA project to learn about this concept and share the evidence, the research evidence that has been done so far under the Insect for Feed in West Africa. The objective of the project is to grow insect larvae and use it to produce meat. And here is a cage in which we raise black soldier fly. These are flies that are naturally living in our environment. They are harmless. They don't even feed. They just need water to survive. So we grow them in this cage and harvest the larvae and use the larvae to produce the meal that we use to mix with the poultry feed and feed to our chicken. And if we harvest the eggs, it takes about five days to hatch. And after the hatch, it takes about um, eight days to get to the pupa stage. Black soldier fly larvae grow on substrate. A substrate is any organic material that serves as a medium or an attractant and used in attracting adult black soldier flies to lay eggs. The larvae are voracious feeders that consume large volumes of the substrate and convert them to body mass. Some of the important factors to consider when choosing a substrate are the moisture content, the nutrient composition, the particle size. Black soldier fly larvae do well in a moisture content of between 40 to 90 percent. The particle size needs to be smaller to enable them to easily assimilate, break down and digest the substrates and accumulate into body mass. Some of the possible substrates to use are pito mash, pig manure, fruit waste, vegetable waste, chicken manure, market waste, millet porridge waste, the waste obtained from Hausa Kuku. So far, all these waste substances have given excellent results in producing high quality 
black soldier fly lavi. When it gets to the people stage, it will generate into the adult fly. At that time, it is not good to feed to animals. So we we'll harvest the larvae just before they enter the pupal stage. At that stage, they will look like ordinary larvae. We collect them, separate them from the residue, and then kill them by dropping them in the hot water. Just drop it in hot water and then put it in an oven or a solar dryer or any means to do the drying. You dry at a temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius. It shouldn't be too hot. If it's too hot, you destroy the protein. After drying it, it is good. You can store it and you can use it to mix your feed and give it to the birds. Alternatively, you can also feed the fresh larvae to scavenging birds in your home. We have done analysis on the larvae. It is just comparable to fish. You can get about 50 to 60 percent crude protein. The energy level is quite high, comparable to soybean. So we use it in a mixture of soybean and larvae meal, and we remove the fish meal from it entirely. We use it to produce broilers, and by the end of the eighth week, we had attained more than the two kilograms, and the fish based beds were the least in terms of the weight gain, in terms of costs. It was more expensive to produce with the fish meal. So in conclusion from the experiment, it is such that the larvae meal produced the best beds in terms of weight and in terms of costs. It was the cheapest. So if you use the larvae meal, you are about to save about 10 to 15 percent of your production costs. And if you are selling it, given the same weight, selling by weight, you are about to gain about um, a thousand CDs on 500 beds, broiler production. In terms of safety, we have also tested there are no uh, microorganisms that are harmful to the beds. And so in terms of mortality of the beds, there's no difference in using fish or soybean or using the larvae meal. So we, from there to conclude that it is safe to use a black soldier larvae meal. The other larvae meal that can be used is the house fly. In that one, you don't need these cages. You just prepare your substrate and leave it in the open and the house fly will just come and lay their eggs in. Then you incubate it. And in just about two to three days, you start harvesting your house fly larvae. It is also very healthy, but just that people have bad impression and perceptions about the house fly larvae. But we have also tested that one. It's also better than using fish meal. Farmers mostly complain of the cost of poultry feed. And if there is this alternative source of protein, for the poultry feed, I think it will help most of our farmers. It will cut down the cost of production, especially with the broiler poultry farmers. This is a good technology which we need to promote because most of the challenges faced by livestock farmers are high cost of feed, most especially with respect to the fish meal. So this technology I think is very good and will go a long way to address some of these uh, challenges farmers have with respect to high cost of uh, feed. It was an interesting visit because we were able to go to the insect tree. Members of the alliance were able to see the cages where the black soldier fly is raised, the way they lay their eggs, the way the eggs are hatched, and there, there are a whole lot of processes. And uh, they have been able to come to terms with the fact that it is something that is quite simple that anybody, any entrepreneur in the area of livestock agriculture can easily undertake. We brought together agricultural directors in the various districts in Greater Accra for them to see and help to promote it among their peers and also among farmers they are working with so that uh, very soon people, the industry can start adopting this technology and then using it. By using the lava for instance, we can use it to replace some other expensive 
could have buy for it. Uh, we did two. I can use the uh, manure produced to fertilize my mangoes. And with this, I wouldn't be buying any synthetic fertilizer. So I think it's a very laudable idea by animal research to, to help uh, animal production gather. So I recommend all farmers to take it serious and adapt to it. What we've learned about the substrate, lava, uh, when we adopt it, it's going to help us increase our yield and then economically uh, it will make us gain more. Looking at it, it's going to be down the cost of the production of our feed and then this one is less expensive from the production and therefore I believe we're going to get great margin from the sales of our product if we adopt the new system. This technology of producing and using insect larvae as a source of protein meal for livestock production fits very well into the concept of sustainable agricultural intensification. The reason being that sustainable agricultural intensification aims at producing more without wasting resources or degrading the environment too much. So what happens is that when you are raising these insects to get their larvae, you don't need too much space. You need just some small space. You don't need too many resources to be able to make it come true. All you need is to get cages or to use those in the natural environment to be able to harvest these larvae and feed them to your, your poultry or process them into the feed formulation system. You don't only get the protein from this technology. Out of it, you are also getting compost because the, the larvae are raised on what we call substrates, which include the market waste, uh, poultry waste and all that. So after raising your larvae, what is left becomes compost, which is also very rich for uh, fertilizing soil for our farm, our gardens and all that. And aside from getting the compost and the protein, you are also cleaning the environment and preserving its quality. Papa.